Hey everyone, thanks so much for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to be talking about how I would learn data science if I had to start over again in 2024. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nicholas Fasciola. I currently hold a bachelor's in computer science from Arizona State University, and I'm currently one class away from finishing my master's in computer science from Grand Canyon University. Um, my technical job title is engineer. However, much of my workflow is similar to what a data scientist would do. I often spend a lot of my time prepping data, cleaning it, building models to visualize and convey those results, and then conveying those results to stakeholders, which is very similar to what a data scientist would do. I feel obligated to make that distinction just because some people have a very specific image of what a data scientist should look like, and in all honesty, your job title means very little about what you actually do. So anyways, I think my journey could be a good foundation for a lot of you out there. And I'd like to share with you some insights that I've learned through my journey and things I would change along the way. In my opinion, there are five key things you need to do in order to become a data scientist, which I'm going to break down each step and talk through each one. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now for step number one, I know it's going to make a lot of you out there very upset because it's not the most popular thing to say on the internet these days anymore. But before you click away, please just hear me out. So number one step to becoming a data scientist is to go to college. If you're already doing this, great job. Just skip to the next section of the video. You don't need to listen to me talk about it. But if you're not doing it, I highly recommend you should for a couple of reasons. In all honesty, college is the most straightforward and rewarding way to get a grasp on the fundamentals of data science. While yes, it's theoretically possible that you can get a job in data science without going to college, you're going to close a lot of doors on yourself by doing so. In my personal experience, I actually wouldn't have the job that I have right now if I didn't go to college because my company and many others out there will not hire someone without a bachelor's degree. One thing about being a data scientist is learning to make data-driven decisions. And if you look at the data of college graduates versus high school graduates, you will see that on average, people who go to college make way more over their lifetime than those who don't. So yes, if you have to go into debt for a degree in computer science or data science, it's going to be well worth your while. You'll get a higher paying job and you'll get a job that you're actually passionate about. Yes, there's also a lot of fluff in college and courses that don't directly apply to your job. But the value of these courses are very often underlooked, in my opinion. I think that companies want well-rounded individuals and not just a person with a singular profitable skill. If you're really unsure whether or not college is right for you, I would suggest looking into your local community college as a starting point, as in my opinion, they are dramatically underrated for the value that they provide. As somebody who started out at community college myself, I actually found that the quality of education at the community college was higher than what I received at a state university. First of all, the class sizes are a lot smaller, so you'll get to work with your professor directly one-on-one -on -one and build your skills from somebody who has a doctorate in the field. On top of that, it's also cheaper, and you can pay per credit hour. So really, you should just try taking at least one or two intro courses and see what you think. If you don't like it, worst case scenario, you're out a couple hundred dollars and you tried something that you thought you were interested in. But if you do like it, then you're well on your way to your career as a data scientist. Okay, so let's say none of that convinced you. You're going to say to yourself, Nick, you're full of crap. I don't want to go to college. College sucks. It's not for me. Okay, that's fine. But if you decide not to pursue the degree, you're going to have to be more self-motivated in order to get your foot in the door in data science. My advice for somebody who's taking this route would be to get a data entry job and then try to move within your company. If you're going to go this route also, you're going to need to have an outstanding portfolio and probably great network connections in order to make this move. My other advice would be to consider joining professional groups like Data Science Central, Meetup Groups, or other online communities that focus on data analytics and data science. This will help you meet people who can vouch for your skills and get your foot in the door, but I'll cover this more later on in the video. Step number two to becoming a data scientist is to research different tools that data scientists use and try to become an expert in at least one of them. So like a decade ago, it used to just be that you could learn a programming language and then you were good to go in the job market. 
The market has drastically changed since then, and now you really need to have a specialization. From my personal experience and my professional career, people generally like to know you by the skill you specialize in. So I'll give you an example of that. At my job, I'm pretty much known as the Python guy because Python is my top skill and people come to me when they have questions about Python and they need help writing a script or fixing a bug. Now maybe for you it's not Python, maybe for you it's R or SQL or Power BI. Really just pick one and then try to become an expert in that one particular skill. Then once you've mastered that skill, you need to sell that skill hard on your resume and your portfolio so that when you go to an interview with a company, they know exactly what they're hiring you for. Now you're probably saying, wait a minute, Nick, didn't you just say that we need to go to college because companies want well-rounded individuals and not somebody who just has one profitable skill? Yes. But there's a clear distinction here and let me try to explain it. Thing is, you want to be an expert in something, but you also want to be adaptable to other skill sets. So you need to be great at one skill, but then decent enough to be dangerous in many other skills. And some of these skills might include writing, critical thinking, and communication, all of which college teaches you. So in reality, what you should be doing is going to school for the fundamentals, but you also need to work a little bit off the clock to really hone in your skills on one particular skill set. So in reality, what you should be doing is go to college, learn the fundamentals, but you also need to work a little bit outside of college in order to really become an expert in one skill. I know it's hard and I've been there, but trust me, it's going to be worth it in the end. Now I'm going to show my own bias here a bit, but if you're really unsure and you have no idea what to start with, then I would say start with Python. If you can work with Python, then you can work with the majority of data sets out there. Then once you've mastered Python, I would say learn SQL next. If you can work with Python and SQL together, you're going to be very dangerous for the majority of data science projects out there. Now step three to becoming a data scientist is to find a project that you're interested in and start working on it. This is the area where I'd say I made the biggest misstep early on. Um, I spent way too much time watching tutorials and not enough time doing. I ended up in what is known as tutorial hell. In other words, I was just watching tutorials, but I wasn't actually able to apply anything I learned to a project outside of what I saw in a video. So this made it that none of the knowledge that I was Wiring was actually sticking and I wasn't learning as fast as I could have been. In my opinion, the best way to avoid this pitfall is to simply just start working on a project, regardless of if you think it's too hard or not. Um, if you aren't sure where to get started, I recommend going to Kaggle as they have great starter projects and they're well documented online. If that's not really your thing, then another thing you can do is just go to ChatGPT and prompt it to give you some ideas for data science projects. The cool thing about this method, which I didn't have when I was starting, is that not only can ChatGPT give you the idea for a project, but it can also like walk you through the project and help you get unstuck when you run into barriers. It's literally like having a personal assistant to help you do your work. And it's also an example of why we need to treat AI as an augmentation to human skills and not a replacement. But that is a topic for another video. So step number four to becoming a data scientist is to build a portfolio to showcase your projects to the world. Now, there are many ways you could go about this, but I think personally, the best way is to use GitHub pages. It's a literally a free way to host your own website and you basically have almost 100% control over the look and feel of the site. If this is something that is interesting to you guys, I could make a video later on showing how to do this, but I'm sure there's also, I haven't looked, but I'm sure there's also a lot of other videos on YouTube that show you how to set up a site up with GitHub pages. But let's say you don't want to learn how to code a website at all. That's also okay. There's also plenty of alternative tools that essentially make building a website a drag and drop interface. For example, some of these tools you could use are Notion, Balance, and Medium. They basically allow you just to build a clean, professional looking page without coding at all. Even LinkedIn has a section where you can link directly to your projects, but really what matters most is that you have a way to showcase your work that is easy for employers to view. Now finally, step number five to becoming a data scientist 
is to network online with websites like LinkedIn, Facebook, etc., or look for local conferences in your community. So this is unfortunately probably the most important and the hardest part for many aspiring data scientists. At the end of the day, you're gonna be an amazing programmer and an amazing mathematician, but if nobody knows who you are, well then unfortunately, you're probably not gonna get very far or at least as far as you should. Now, this is the part of my journey that I'd say I struggled with the most and I honestly still struggle with it a little bit to this day because I'm a natural introvert. And I know that many of you out there who consume this sort of content are also natural introverts. I don't have much advice on this subject because I'm not a therapist, but if I can shed any insight into how I kind of got over it myself, here's what I would say. Number one, you just need to be confident in your own skill set and know that what you say you can do, you can actually do. You should expect to face criticism and expect that people are going to question your abilities. But if you're confident, it's okay because everybody makes mistakes, including those who criticize you. So don't take it too much to heart and just keep going. And number two, I'd say don't care as much about external validation from others. It used to really bother me when somebody would criticize me or not like me. But honestly, once I started, once I started to get over that and not care as much what other people thought of me, then at the end of the day, I don't need to be scared of networking because if somebody thinks I'm full of crap or they don't like who I am, it doesn't matter because internally, I know what I'm capable of and I know the asset I could provide to any company. And if you need some proof of my growth, it's right here in this video. Two years ago, I would have never gone on camera and talked about something like this, especially with a visible injury. I would have been way too embarrassed about what people said about me. But now, it doesn't matter. You can drop hate in the comments, and honestly, it's not gonna affect my sleep at all. So go ahead, and please, honestly, I would like it if you did, because I really need the algorithm points. So please, if you hate me, please say it in the comments. Anyway, so back to the networking. Um, if you're lucky enough to live in an area with the opportunity to network locally, then you should look up data science networking opportunities in your area and try to attend an event. Um, so there's organizations like the Data Science Society, Pi Data, and there's local chapters of the ACM or the IEE that hold meetups that are perfect for networking. There's also lots of ways you can improve your visibility online. I recommend getting on LinkedIn and trying to make connection there as it's the most popular site for this sort of thing. But there's also Reddit and Facebook and even here on YouTube you can get connections. The idea is to just put yourself out there as much as possible so that you have the credibility and build connections with people who can guide you in the right direction. In fact, I'm going to be opening up a Discord specifically for this purpose that I'm going to put in the link in the description to this video. I'm going to build this community from the ground up and it's going to be meant for like-minded individuals to connect with each other and network. This will be a community where people can showcase their projects, have Q&A sessions, and ask questions and be engaged with each other. The goal is to help each other build our skills and confidence so that we all have a supportive network to lean on. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you. This was my top five things. I think any aspiring data scientist should do. Um, I hope this breakdown gave you some solid guidance, at least for a starting point, if you're freshly new to starting your data science journey or rebooting it. Um, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, uh, drop a like, a comment, and subscribe for more content like this. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and leave me some hate in the comments, and I hope to see you back later on. Um, but if not, uh, that's okay too. Anyways, thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.